Now, it's not that Napoleon had nothing to do with religion, right? So uh, this, is a, this is a print of the signing of the Concordat. So it is Napoleon at the beginning of the 19th century that makes peace with the Catholic Church after the French Revolution. Uh, he has a huge coronation in Notre Dame, right, which is uh, made famous with David's painting. He baptizes his son. Napoleon III is also um, uh, pro-Catholic Church. He allows the Catholic Church to have a big hand in education. But Napoleon isn't seen as the same sort of religious figure that uh, Joan is. All right. Now, one of the places that she is particularly important is in uh, Orléans. And this is the town um, that she helped um, liberate back when she um, rode to the rescue, all right? So she helped lift a siege of Orléans in May, right? And so uh, every year still in Orléans, they have a ceremony celebrating, it's May 8th when this happened. And this is actually, it's a 16th century painting, but it's used as part of the procession in uh, Orléans. And you can see this is Joan here, okay, in her, in her armor. In the period of the late 19th century, one of the things you see is uh, a real emphasis about Joan as spiritual. And if you're in the Republic and you're a liberal, this tends to make them very uncomfortable. Now, if you look at this painting, I'm not sure, can you see anything interesting in the painting if you're looking closely? There's a man on the house. Yeah, right, there's a man on the house. <laughs> Anybody know Joan's story? That's Jesus Christ. Not quite. It's Michael. Um, so these are her voices. All right? That she, when she was um, a mere child, right? She's not very old. She's in her garden. And she starts um, hearing voices that come to her, right? Saints. And they tell her what to do, right? That she needs to go save France, that she has to go help the monarchy. And you see in this period, the late 19th century going into the 20th century, a lot of representations of her as very religious. And this is used especially by the political right um, to argue that there's this connection made between Joan, the monarchy, right, as opposed to the republic, and a need to be spiritual. The argument that the French have lost their way, that they're on the wrong path, uh, and that Joan can help them um, find the right path. The other thing to notice, and I'll, uh, I'll show you a couple other images here, is there's, it's very interesting to see how she's represented, whether she is in uh, dress or in armor, okay? Because she did wear dresses when she was younger, but then the minute she <coughs> decides to go forward and join the cause, then she starts um, dressing in male dress, right? She, she cross-dresses. So was that her in the armor behind? There are two figures. No. no, that's St. Michael. That's right, Saint that's St. Michael and that's um, Margaret. Oh. Or Catherine, sorry. Catherine. Catherine. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Now, so this is actually uh, from, I think it's 1906, um, and it's, you can see the religious aspect, the association, you know, sort of with the whole crown. And uh, it's a period where you see a lot of statues put up of Joan in churches. Um, the right is arguing for this national holiday. The republic is not sure what to do, but they're very nervous, right, about all of the, uh, uh, all of the call for, um, because of the association with the monarchy, the call for her as a national hero. And then this is, uh, it's interesting, because this, so this is a postcard, right, and it's of one of the demonstrations, so it's May 8th, 1909, and in this period, the Republic had actually banned public, religious public um, ceremonies, right? So you could have a religious ceremony in a church, but you were not supposed to have any kind of procession out in public. And so then the state is, is forced to decide what are they going to do? Are they going to you know, move in with police or worse and disband it? Do they arrest people? Do they put priests in jail? And it's a, a sort of very tense over a number of years. 
So that's my second issue, is religion and how it plays um, in both Napoleon and Joan. Because uh, one of the things that's interesting about Napoleon is that he is born, his, his birth date is August 15th, which is a holy day of obligation, right? It is the assumption. So he's not, he's not a purely secular figure, but Joan is clearly more religious. I think those two themes are in some ways the most obvious when you think of these two figures. But I was also very interested uh, in taking the figures not just in the late 19th century, but carrying them well into the 20th century and thinking about what happens when you have very traditional images, symbols, icons, when they encounter the modern world. Right? What, what, do they sort of disappear? Do they get modernized? Uh, do they have the same effect? So I want to show you one way in which they do uh, modernize. Now this I just wanted to show you, these are two famous images of Napoleon, and I like them because you sort of see a more traditional representation, right, with, with the, the looking very um, uh, Bourbon with all the, the robes, and then you see him more in a military, but looking more modern, with a uniform as some sort of an administrator, right, with his maps. The most important way that they do modernize, which I found really interesting, is through commercialization, mm -hmm. consumerism. All right, and this goes back to this idea of thinking about national icons as sacred, and where are the limits? Like, how sacred are they, and who's protecting them, versus who's using them to other ends. So this is Joan selling cheese. Okay, you can see, 40%. Um, that content, all right? And the reference to Lorraine, right, where she, where she is from. All right, and, it, and I, you know, the way that my themes sort of overlap in terms of how she's represented as feudal, but, you know, in a skirt, she's got the fleur-de-lis on her standard. This I found uh, in the archives, and this is uh, a powder. So this is a medical powder that's being sold. It's the Joan of Arc powder. And if you can read the text, it solves almost anything. Uh, and I, I really like that combination of it's clearly selling, but it also has that sort of religious, right? I mean, the, the idea that she can cure uh, by association, I think, is, is interesting. And there's this idea of helping especially women and children as part of, of the ad. Now this is a um, song, all right? So this is by, um, created by a very famous music hall performer. And this takes us back to statues. So the idea is that they've all gotten down off their statues and they perform in the music halls, right? So here you have, here's Napoleon joining all of the other figures, right? So again, the, the question of kind of how silly can you make a national icon? And I have to say, when I was putting this together, it was pretty funny. This morning I got up thinking about this and I'm watching the news and there is a President's Day commercial with Lincoln selling mattresses. So I, I thought, you know, there's sort of uh, something there uh, ab about, you know, they can seem like a very important figure, but they're also good for selling things. Let me just give you a couple other, so this is, um, this is a, for a, a poster for a performance for theater, right? So Sarah Bernhardt was pre-World War I and actually during the war, probably the best known female actress. Um, in France, and she considered this a very important role to play Joan of Arc. Here you have Joan selling cars. Right? And I, I really like this image from the point of view of Joan is, you know, rides horses, is feudal, wears armor, and she is promoting, you know, one of the most modern <laughs> ideas, right, to, to shift to uh, automobiles. And I'll just give you a couple others. Um, th this, so this is cognac, right? And you can get it in different, I and I really like this cannon motif. Um, and one of the things about this is not just the question of how do you take 
traditional image and, and modernize it. What does that mean? And what does it mean to use it commercially? I'm also very interested in the question of high versus low, right? That, that in a lot of work, uh, you sort of expect a, a big division between, you know, you would think that a figure like Joan of Arc or Napoleon would be generally in high culture, right? Um, sophisticated plays, biographies, military history, but then you have cognac cannons. Um, and I, in some ways, I think what, what I'm arguing is that there's more of a continuum from what might be viewed as kitsch, right, that, that sort of mass culture object, up through board games, um, music hall performances, right, that it's not sort of one or the other, but that they are uh, related. And one thing is they do keep them uh, commonly known, right? Again, familiar to people in a variety of ways. I'll just give you one. So this is Joan of Arc wallpaper that you could have. 